Today we're going to be talking about video laryngoscopy assisted bronchoscopic intubation. Again, my name is Joffer Oda and uh, I practice anesthesiology and uh, anesthesiology critical care. A, a little note about the title, you know, as anesthesiologists, we're used to calling this fiber optic intubation. We don't really use fiber optic scopes uh, very much uh, anymore, especially with the uh, advent of the new disposable bronchoscopes. And so hence the title bronchoscopic intubation. But um, I think we all know what, what I'm referring to here. Uh, and if not, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll hopefully learn about it. Just a quick disclaimer. Um, the techniques shown and the views expressed are mine uh, and only mine. They do not necessarily reflect the views of Verathon. Um, you should always refer to your operations and maintenance manuals for your GlideScope products. So video laryngoscopy, lots of people are using it now. Uh, it, it's revolutionized the difficult airway, uh, again, in my, in my personal opinion. Uh, the reason why is it gives us superior laryngoscopic views. Um, because of those great views that we can achieve with video laryngoscopy, I think that we, we have to perform less awake intubations because I'm confident uh, that I can get a view with a, as long as I'm assured that I can, uh, mask a patient, I'm comfortable putting that patient to sleep because I know I'm going to get a pretty excellent view with video laryngoscopy. Um, the other great benefit to VL is that um, because it gives us a, a great view right away, uh, and we don't, we don't necessarily have to mess around with um, using uh, a few different blades in direct laryngoscopy, using a lot of force to uh, get a good view um, which causes less trauma to patients. The glide scope, it's my uh, video laryngoscopy of preference. There's a lot out there. Um, you can use whichever scope that you have or that you're comfortable. I prefer the glide scope. I, um, it gives, it'll improve your laryngoscopic view by one to two grades on the Cormac Lehane grading system. Um, so, you know, if you have a difficult airway that is a grade three view, it's going to take it to a grade two view, which I think everybody would be able to intubate. The reason why um, I prefer the glide scope, um, and not everybody does, but uh, is because of this hyperangulated blade. You can see that the glide scope blade is very hyperangulated compared to a, a typical Mac blade there. Um, that has its pros and its cons. Um, because of its hyperangulated tip, it can, uh, it can actually give us too good of a view of anterior airways. And what I mean by that is that you will be able to achieve a great view of the glottic opening, but you may not necessarily be able to direct your tube that anterior. So that's what I mean by too good of a view. Things that you can do to try to pass your tube when you have a very anterior airway is that you can try pulling the blade out a little bit. And because it's hyperangulated, when you pull out a little bit, it, it allows you to have a more direct view of the vocal cords um, and a more direct passage of your tube. Um, you can try pulling the stylet out a little bit and uh, having a little more flexibility at the tip of your tube. Um, you can use a, so you pull your stylet out and then put a tube exchanger or a bougie through the tube and try to get that through the cords and then slide your ET tube over uh, that tube exchanger or bougie. Don't be afraid to use cricoid pressure. That can really um, help push the uh, glottic opening posteriorly, which will allow you to pass your ET tube. Um, another thing you can do is if you move your tube all the way to the corner of the mouth, uh, it'll, it'll allow you more leverage, which will allow um, better anterior posterior movement. Um, and speaking of leverage, something I don't have on there is make sure you hold your tube all the way at the top of the tube because that will give you most leverage uh, and most control of your ET tube and allow you to direct it anteriorly when necessary. Um, there are also um, some arc articulating introducers out there that you can pass through your ET tube and then direct anteriorly. And then I, I find it helpful to use a Parker Flex ET tube, which is pictured on the bottom of the screen there. And you can see that it's got a little bit of a bird beak that is curved. And that um, a lot of times when you uh, are trying to pass your ET tube, you'll get caught up on the arytenoids. And this curvature of the Parker uh, tube will bounce right off the arytenoids and through the cords. Um, and of course, the uh, subject of the talk today is, and, and another great way to get your uh, tube anteriorly when you need to, 
is a bronchoscope through your tube, um, which we'll use as a video stylet, so to speak. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. 